These images are from the Apollo 17 mission. NASA has conducted six Apollo missions where human landed on the surface of moon. Till today, more than 20 spacecraft have landed on the surface of moon by different space organizations. But yet the poles of the moon remain untouched until the Chandrayaan-3 mission. Chandrayaan-3 made India the fourth nation to achieve a soft landing on the surface of moon and the first nation to touch the south pole of the moon. We all know ISRO's Chandrayaan-2 was a partially failure mission. But do you know ISRO's Chandrayaan-1 first detected the presence of water molecules on the moon? Today we will be talking about the Chandrayaan-3 mission and the presence of water on the moon. Hi everyone, my name is Aditya and welcome back to my channel SkyMap. Why water on the moon is so important? The moon is the closest celestial body to our earth. If we want to build a human colony outside of earth, then moon is the closest place. NASA is trying to do the same with the Artemis mission. NASA says we are going back to moon for scientific discovery, economic benefits and inspiration for new generations of explorers. In fact, with the decreasing resources of earth, if we don't do that, humanity will be in great danger in near future. Water is one of the most important material for life and human being. Apart from life, it's a must-have element for industrial use. So, if we find water on the moon, it will be a lot easier to establish base on the moon. Otherwise, we have to carry the water to the moon from the earth. Discovery of water on the moon According to NASA, Cassini spacecraft during its flyby on the moon on August 1999 had detected hydroxyl molecules. In chemistry, the hydroxyl group is a functional group made up of one hydrogen and one oxygen atom. Water is a very common molecule with hydroxyl group. After that, many spacecrafts and orbiters sent the same data to Earth. But in September 2009, Chandrayaan-1 first confirmed the presence of water molecules with the help of the Moon Mineralogy Mapper M3 and an instrument called CHES. The water molecule's presence was detected near the poles of the Moon. But how? Just like the planet Mercury, does our Moon has water ice trapped in the poles? Mercury's axial tilt is very low, approximately 2 degrees, and the atmosphere is very thin. So sunlight can't reach in some craters of Mercury's poles. And due to the absence of atmosphere, the heat can't regulate from one place to another. Scientists have seen water ice in the craters of Mercury's poles. Our moon's axial tilt and atmospheric condition is almost the same as Mercury. So scientists are expecting the same ice formation on the poles of moon. Finding water ice was one of the main objectives of ISRO's Chandrayaan-3 mission. The Chandrayaan-3 landing on the moon. Indian space research organization ISRO is famous in the whole world for its cost-effective missions. The budget of the Chandrayaan-3 mission was 75 million US dollars, which was significantly lower than any NASA mission and even a lot cheaper than some Hollywood movies. ISRO's Chandrayaan-2 mission was partially successful because the lander crash landed on the moon's surface due to some technical and software glitches. Though the orbiter module was perfectly fine, after learning from the previous failure, ISRO made many changes on the Chandrayaan-3 mission. At last, it launched on 14th July 2023 at 2.35 pm Indian Standard Time from Satish Dhawan Space Center launch pad in Sriharikota, Andhra Pradesh with the help of a 
LVM3 rocket. Generally for NASA, a spacecraft takes maximum 5 to 6 days to reach the moon. But in the case of Chandrayaan-3, it took more than 39 days. But why? This mission was a low budget mission. The launch vehicle used in this mission was not a very capable one. So Chandrayaan-3 took the gravity assist of Earth to increase its speed. It orbited Earth in five different orbits, covering each orbit multiple times to gain speed. And finally, on the 5th August, it entered the Moon's orbit. Then it again orbited the Moon to decrease its speed and made its orbit smaller. On 17th August, the Vikram lander got separated from the propulsion module to begin the landing operation. Finally, on 23rd August, the Vikram lander soft landed on the Moon's south pole. Almost on the same time, the Russian lunar lander mission, Luna 25, crash landed on the Moon's surface. Landing on the Moon's surface is tougher than landing on Mars. Because on Mars, there is an atmosphere. With the help of a parachute, the speed of the lander can be reduced by a significant amount. But on the Moon, there is no atmosphere. So the speed of the lander module must be reduced by only using the thrusters of the lander module. This is a very tough job. That's why there are only four countries who have successfully landed on the surface of moon. Was Chandrayaan-3 a successful mission? Chandrayaan-3 mainly had two components, Vikram lander and propulsion module. The propulsion module carried the lander from the Earth to the Moon. The main thrusters and fuel tanks were in this module. After separation from the lander module, it performed some scientific experiments. The payload spectropolarimetry of habitable planet Earth, in short, shape, was attached to it. It studied the spectrometry of Earth from the orbit of Moon. This data can be used later while finding a habitable exoplanet. In Chandrayaan-3, there was no orbiter module, as the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter module was working properly on the Moon. Now the Vikram lander. It carried the Pragyan rover to the Moon, a six-wheeled vehicle with the mass of 26 kg. The whole mission was solar powered. The rover started its journey on the very first day. It was a very capable one. As you can see, it walked through the small crater. This is the whole route of the rover. It had corrected its direction several times due to small craters. Its range was 500 meter. There was mainly two payloads with this rover. The first one, Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer. Its job was to hit the moon's surface with the alpha particles and detect the X-ray spectrum coming out from the object. The second one, Laser Induced Breakdown Spectroscopy. Its job was almost the same, apart from hitting the moon's surface with a laser. It detected iron, titanium, aluminium, chromium, calcium, the most important one is sulfur. This sulfur proves there was volcanic activity long before. It can also help to understand the formation of the moon. But the main objective, water or hydrogen, was missing. Though the water was missing, ISRO found something related to water. Another payload attached to the Vikram lander named Chandra's surface thermophysical experiment dug into the moon's surface. The results were surprising. The surface temperature of the moon was around 60 degrees Celsius. But with the digging of only 8 cm, the temperature dropped to minus 10 degrees Celsius. This is very unusual. Scientists are speculating that the water might be trapped under the moon's surface near the poles. 
which Isro was trying to find out on the surface of South Pole. There were two more payloads with the lander module Vikram. One estimated the near surface plasma density over time and another one named ILSA detected a moon quake. On 3rd September, Vikram lander performed hop landing. It fired up its boosters for lift up and re-landed 30 to 40 cm away from the previous landing site. These images are from the before and after hop landing. As the time was passing out, the mission was also coming towards the end. This was a solar powered mission, means when the sun sets, there is no energy source. Due to the absence of atmosphere during the night, the temperature of the moon drops to minus 120 to 130 degrees Celsius. Surviving in this extreme temperature was impossible. So with the setting sun, the mission ended. The duration of the mission was 13 to 14 days, almost the same to a lunar day. For this reason, NASA and other space organizations use heating mechanism fueled by radioactive elements to keep the spacecraft alive in this chilling environment. Later, ISRO announced the propulsion module which we talked earlier has returned to Earth's orbit with the gravity assist of Moon. Now it's orbiting our Earth. So where is the water? In the year 2009, just after Chandrayaan 1's groundbreaking discovery, NASA's Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite Mission was conducted to confirm the presence of water on the moon. It hit one of the moon's south pole's permanently shadowed crater with an impact mass of 2305 kg and impact velocity of more than 9000 km per hour. It created plumes of over 16 km tall. NASA detected water ice in these plumes. The meteor shower we see on Earth is due to the atmosphere of Earth. Rocks from outer space burn up while entering the Earth due to this atmosphere. But on the moon, this meteor shower hits its surface. NASA's LADY spacecraft has detected the presence of water during a meteor shower. Scientists think the water trapped just underneath the surface of the moon comes out when the micrometeors hit the surface of the moon. Though Chandrayaan-3 was unable to find the water on the poles of the moon, but it answered the question, where we will possibly find the water? ISRO announced the Chandrayaan-3 was a successful mission. In fact, the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, named the landing site of Chandrayaan-3 as Sib Sakti Point. What do you think about the success of the mission? Please write it down in the comment section. I would love to know your thoughts. If you found this cosmic journey as fascinating as I did, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family members. And remember, keep looking up, stay curious and explore the mysteries of the night sky. <laughs>